Hello and welcome back to your 1-2-3-D tutorial. So we finished up with our last tutorial and we had our um, we had our 1-2-3-D model here and we also had a AutoCAD DXF. Okay, so let me just go back to the 1-2-3-D model just to show you. This is what we finished up with. And just so we're on the same page, our sheet size was 800 millimeters by 800 millimeters. So the next step, what we will do is, actually we already imp we already exported a STL file. Let me just double check. So in our model files, yeah. So we had our one two three D um, mesh, which was converted to an STL. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a second window of 123D. So you can right click on your icon or you can hold shift and left click. And that will open a second window. So now we have a fresh 123D window and we also have our original. Now what we're going to do is we're going to import that mesh STL file. And as you can see, it, it comes in as a faceted model. So let's go over to our units. Let's change that to millimeters. And then let's just change our height, first of all, to 120. Let that update. And then what we will do is we will take off uniform scale. And if you notice, the width and the length are slightly different than the original. But that's no problem. If we go back to our original file again, and let's just copy in the width, so Control and C, back into our STL mesh, and Control and V, enter, and that should update. And then back into our original once more, and copy the length. Control and C once more into our length, control and V and enter. And it's not much, it's only like a half a millimeter out, but still we may as well get it right while we're doing it. So from here, let's make our manufacturing settings match the original. Let's go 800 by 800. So down to our material uh, unit, millimeters. And let's make our material 800 in length and 800 in width. The thickness is irrelevant at this stage. Remember, we're going to bring this to CNC manufacture. Although this software is particularly designed for um, for paper, that's that doesn't matter. We're going to we're going to push the boundaries and we're going to bring this to CNC manufacture. So from here. We're going to select a different uh, technique, but before we do that, let's uh, account for our material uh, thickness of our actual from our actual original uh, model. So this is our original. This is going to form our skin. Remember, this folded out uh, material is going to fold back up again. We're going to V groove along these uh, these lines, these fold lines, and we're going to cut completely through. The boundary line which is the red line and then go back into our mesh <clears throat> so let's just say in this case I'm thinking of using a three millimeter material say three millimeter birch plywood so I'm just going to reduce the size make sure your uniform scale is not checked I'm just going to reduce everything by three millimeters so 117 for the height and Disregarding the decimals, I'm just going to take 3 millimeters from 330, so that's 327, and then 3 millimeters from 201, 198. So now our model has been reduced in our length, width, and height by 3 millimeters. So what we will do now is we're going to form the skeleton for the inside supporting structure of our faceted original model. So this is our faceted original model. So let's let's just, let's select a technique. 
So we could go with stack slices. Now that's, it works perfectly, but that's a lot of material to use. It's gonna be a very heavy piece, even though it's only a small model. But if we were to go full scale with this as a full scale coffee table, or even a full scale dinner table, that's, that's gonna be a lot of material. So let's try the interlocked slices. And we have been uh, approached with a lot of errors, but again, that's no problem. We can fix that. Just for curiosity, we can see what the errors are. So there's multiple notches, multiple notches, multiple notches throughout. Okay, so let me explain that. If I zoom in over here, you can see that if you want to slide in one segment through this uh, outside slot, it's not gonna be able to, to, to meet the inner slot because of the material here in, in the middle. So what we can do is we can go over here to our slice direction. Let's roll it around so you can see your little icon clearly and make sure that the little rotate symbol has been activated. So if you are uh, pressing on the, on the exterior ring, it's not gonna work. That's just to select which direction you want to actually rotate it in. So pick our little orange symbol and let's rotate that around until the red lines have gone. And actually, I'm gonna rotate it around 90 degrees. So we have a nice, there we go. So we have a nice comfortable transition. We can match them up nicely. And then very simply, we can go down here and we can select what way we want to lay this out. So first of all, we can get our plans and we can see that we have each of our segments which are numbered and they're gonna slide, they're gonna to go together nicely and we're mapped out already with the, with the annotations so it'll be easy, it'll fit together like a jigsaw. So as you can see, this is an 800 by 800 panel and the layout arrangement is set to simple but for optimization, we can nest this so we are using less material. So you can use this extra bit of material for something else. That's fine. So we want to select our file type and we're going to select DXF. Millimeters and export. And back into our model files folder. And we already have our original Canty 1 or Cant 1. I'm just going to call this Cant 1 interior if I could spell it correctly there we go save it in here I'm going to go back into my AutoCAD file so here we have our original Cant 1 I'm going to open the Cant 1 interior if I double click on my middle mouse on my roll wheel then it's going to zoom to the uh, to the full screen so here we have this is ready to go this is ready to go for manufacturer as it is And our original just needs some work. So very quickly, I'm just gonna demonstrate what needs to be done. Again, it may seem like a laborious effort, but believe me, it's a lot less than trying to work out the, the mathematical geometry that will be involved in, in unfolding this, this model. So if I zoom in so we can see these three, so you can see these three colors clearly. So we have the black um, perforated line. And as, I, as we mentioned before, it's typically made for paper so if you were to use a laser machine to cut this, those little perforations would work fine, but we want this to be a clean cut from start to finish. So let me show you how we can do this. If we go into our layers, 123D has all automatically uh, set some layers by default. So we have our annotation. If we click the little light bulb, that's gonna turn off the red line. Our boundary, is the blue line and our fold line is the black perforated line which runs through uh, the center of the object so what we will do is we're going to turn off the boundary and the fold line so we're just left with the red line on the outside okay so once you have your layer's turned off. What we're gonna do is just type in LIN, enter, and we're gonna trace our own geometry 
around this object. Make sure that you zoom right in so that you make sure that you snap accurately onto the points. Like so. Now I'm not going to go around the complete perimeter of this object, but I'm just going to go around enough just so that you can see the procedure. And that'll do us. I'm just going to escape to cancel that line. Now I'm going to turn off the annotation layer so that we are left with one our own geometry, one, one line. And if we select it, you can actually see that it's actually broken up into separate separate lines. So if we highlight that complete set of geometry, and in, in your case it will be the entire boundary, and then just type in join and enter. And now we can see that we when we select it, it's one complete line. Now, if we go up here to your very top left icon on your layer panel, it's layer properties, and we can add our own layer. See, new layer, we can press Alt and N, or we can check the little icon. And we can call this our own layer. I'm just going to call this my boundary. Enter. I'm going to close down the uh, layer properties. I'm going to select my line and then I'm just going to simply click my boundary and now this line has been added to that layer. So if I turn off that layer, it's not visible anymore. So now you can manage each layer in your own in your own in its own right. So what I will do is I'll actually turn off my boundary and I will turn off the annotation and I will put on the fold line. Actually, I will leave on the annotation just so we can see where we're going. In your case, it'll be your own geometry. So again, this, this, let's just type in line or LIN and then we can simply just join the endpoints. And as you can see, I'm after snapping on the, on, the, on, the wrong, on the wrong part of the line. So I'm going to space bar to activate the previous command. Zoom right in, get on the intersection point, and you simply just repeat the process. I'm going to escape that again, spacebar, snap onto my point, zoom right, zooming right in just to make sure that you're not snapping on the uh, on the wrong section of the line. like so and it's simply just a matter of repeating that process until you have completed uh, completed your, your geometry so again we can go in and we can add a new layer and we can call this my fold Something wrong with my spelling today. I'm going to close that down again. I'm going to turn off the annotation and I'm going to turn off the original fold line. And once more, I'm going to select the geometry and I'm going to join it up so that we're dealing with one, one piece of geometry. I mustn't have selected everything. Join, enter. Okay, it won't let me select that last piece, but however, okay, well, but still, that's plenty good enough for our CNC to follow. So I'm just going to turn back on my layers. And as you can see, we, what we will be left with is our own boundary line and our own fold line for our CNC to follow. So let me just show you uh, how this will work. If I open up my images. So as you can see here we have the C and C. And we're just going to V groove from either section, from sorry, from either side of our panel. So this is a this is a V groove of a hexagonal pattern, as you can see. And the 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 piece 
uh, the, the board has been matched identically so it's mirrored on, on, on each side and there's just enough material left in the middle to hold it together so I've left I've actually left on about a millimeter of material so that it can bend and it'll actually soften a little bit nicer with uh, the application of steam or even simply pouring some boiling water over it and rinsing it straight off again and then the, the board becomes pliable so in that instance I just took off a section I cut around the boundary and then I was able to fold uh, fold the, the board this in this case it was plywood so I folded the plywood around to achieve this this curvature now this is a simple simple enough kind of curve but as you can see with this prototype you can really you can really uh, achieve some elaborate curves but uh, again this particular piece um, was determined by the hex hexagonal pattern whereas in our case we have the advantage of these uh, these fold lines if I go in here so this pattern itself is actually going to give us our fold line so our V groove is going to run along this line after we trace it in AutoCAD and then Bob's your uncle you'll end up with a beautiful piece that will actually fold back up again and which is supported by this interlocking structure of slices okay so I hope you have some fun with that and keep touch on the Design Burns website and you will, uh, you will notice some more tutorials going up on 123D Make, 3DS Max and Inventor and a number of other softwares. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you again.